Okay. I want to start with Amy, though, uh, because really what jumped out to me in some of the pre-show notes, Amy, and, and look, you, you've been, I think, fair to say, uh, one of the more cautious investors that we've had on the show in the last six months or so. You are less so today, right? I'm less bearish okay. than I was in January is what you told our producers. Why? Well, I just think a lot of the bad news has now been priced in. We were really cautious coming into the year. At the beginning of the year, there were only three 25-bit um, Fed hikes priced into the markets. People were still in the transitory camp. Um, we thought inflation would be more durable. But now everybody I talk to is bearish, and the market's down 20 percent. Um, and at one point a few weeks ago, we had gotten to 16 price hikes. You know, people had 4 percent Fed funds at the end of the year, and we thought that was overdone. So we did make some moves um, a few weeks ago. We got a little bit more aggressive. We added um, I'm not saying I'm wildly bullish by any stretch of the imagination, but I do think the risk reward is certainly more balanced here than it was um, six months ago. Mm. Steph, have we overdone it? Is Amy right? Did things just get too negative? I mean, Jim Labenthal will probably tell you that when I go to him <laughs> next. But, but how about that story that some are now trying to tell that things got way too negative and it's time to get a little more optimistic than maybe we thought we could be uh, even a month or so ago? They're very negative, right? And we are pricing in a lot of bad news, but the problem is we still have so many unknowns in the near term. So you have to separate. Are you near term focused or long term focused? Long term focused, I want to be in equities. I want to have a balanced, diversified portfolio. But if I'm near term focused and I'm mindful of better opportunities to add along the way, that's where I'm at at this very moment. Although I have been slowly putting money to work over the last couple of weeks, you and I have talked about it mainly on overtime. Uh, but near term, we have to deal with data. We have to deal with not only CPI and PPI, but we have to deal with retail sales and University of Michigan sentiment and PPIs and manufacturing data next week. And I don't think it's going to be that good. Look at the NHIB, Small Business Optimism Index, coming in the lowest level since 2013. So sentiment is really, really cautious, but I still think we have to get through that. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have to get through the Fed. We have got to go from them being hawkish to either neutral or dovish. And I don't see that happening anytime soon. And they've right. got a terrible track record of soft landing. And then lastly, we have to get through earnings. I think earnings are going to be OK, but obviously we're all waiting for the guidance. Mm -hmm. The guidance could be the one catalyst that pulls stocks down one more time to be a more aggressive in mm -hmm. buying. So let me ask you this. Are, are you inclined to be a buyer of dips or a seller of rips at the present time? Yeah, I'm a, no, I'm a, I'm a buyer. I'm a buyer. We talked about Berkshire being a new, a new name. I got to tell you, I really like this Pepsi quarter, and I can't believe it's not up even more. Uh, some of the technology sec in this technology stocks, you know I'm underweight. I'm looking at opportunities there. So absolutely, I'm more of a buyer. That's my longer-term thinking, though. Mm -hmm. But I'm also mindful that I could get a better look, right? Because if guidance is coming down, stocks are not going higher. Yeah. So I think I know what Jim Labenthal is going to say. So I want to go to Josh first. So get him out of here. I want Josh to set the, I want you to set the table uh, for him. So, I mean, you heard what the ladies had to say. What's your perspective here on what is a big week for the market? Earnings kicking off, CPI tomorrow, and, you know, a lot of other stuff on our plate, too. Yeah. So we're going to start with the financials. And the financials actually are leading today, which is interesting. I'm long J.P. Morgan. Stock looks like it wants to make a run at this 200-day moving average um, and possibly get itself into an uptrend for the first time since November. Um, so there are, like, small little highlights like that each day. You can always find, like, one or two positive things to talk about. But big picture, we reinverted the yield curve, the, the most inverted it's been since 2007, just in the last week or so. Um, and quite frankly, uh, Wall Street consensus estimates for this quarter's earnings are up about 5 percent, which is pretty weak relative to uh, recent history and decelerating rapidly. Uh, a lot of people are still hiding out in the tech giants or the communications giants. They think that those earning streams will somehow magically not be susceptible to a decelerating economy. They'll find out the hard way that that won't be true. Um, we've already heard from Microsoft. Don't expect anything good. That's a prelude to, oh, actually, things are getting worse. You'll see the same thing out of Meta. Alphabet won't be immune. So it's not going to be fun. There will be a lot of mines in the minefield. There will be some companies that are unaffected or put up good quarters, Pepsi being an example of that. I think that, unfortunately, those will be few and far between. Mm -hmm. I don't paint this picture, though, to tell you, like, you know, go to cash or everything's terrible. This is what you have to live through. 
This is the, the, the way the cycle works. And I've always looked at, you know, overall markets or s overall sectors just in the context of, like, not every day is your birthday. Not every day is... So one of the things that I've repeatedly emphasized on the show... Mm -hmm. You know, Stephanie's bullish, Jim's bullish, I'm bearish, blah, blah, blah. But a lot of this is a, is a difference in time frame. I don't think you'll be upset if you buy a stock today and you look at it three years from now. I do think you will two weeks from now. Well, let me ask you so this, that, That's really what we're, we're debating on the desk, do you Do you think the risk-reward for stocks has improved? Because I of think that's what Amy is suggesting. She's 100% and, right. And that's also what Marco Kalanovic of J.P. Morgan is suggesting as well as you move into the second She's half of the year. She's 100% right. You're, buy, you're buying stocks uh, at a 30% at a discount to what the forward earnings multiple was just six months ago. So, like, statistically, you're already in a better position than you were. So we're not talking about, you know, 10-year returns from these levels. What we're saying is, like, are there better buying opportunities looming on the horizon? And if you, if you pull out multiples and all of the things that are not good timing signals. And just look at what is. We are in a statistical downtrend, downward sloping 200-day moving average. The highs are lower than the previous highs. The lows are lower than the previous lows. It's a stair-step pattern lower. It's no fun. No one's enjoying it. But it's what it is. So you either can admit that or you can't admit that. And a lot of the people that can't admit that are long only, long all the time, got to buy something. So if you're not in that camp, Congratulations. This is a good environment to relax. Look at me. Look at me. This is what the kids call a glow up. OK, <laughs> I'm not worried about the next 10 percent in the nice S&P. Nice tan going on there. What will be, will be. Fresh new dew.